don't have to like me, but what you see, I, I, I hope what you see is what you get. And I, as much as people find that refreshing, which mm. I find strange, it's also frustrating because it's, you know, like the whole reason we've done this a second time is in this world of internet, you can't say what you think anymore. <laughs> you need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Talk about world music and street culture. Killer Callum podcast. Well, no, but it will move and I will fidget. <laughs> yeah, no, that's why I'm leaving you there. I have the <laughs> He is the AD. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct. East London, come on. Uh, the gentleman to the left of me, well, right of me, your left, you ain't ready for this. First of all, big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Whole title of has got the television app supporting our business. Yeah, that's right. Uh, 20 awards. Fantasy FM, True Players, Ganja Crew, The Mighty, DJ Hype Inside the Blaze. <laughs> High five. Hey, man. Hey, man. <laughs> right, keep that up. How's it going? It's great. It, it feels like the next day. We have, we, what, we have attempted this before. There was a load of uh, logistical issues that were going. Here we go again. Look, he's left his phone on. Is that your reminder? It's Must reminder. meet hype today reminder. on time. Must meet hype <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, we're, we're forever proficient on the Killer Killer podcast. Um, what's going on? How are you? I'm great. Um, busy as always. Yeah. Looking forward to a... Quite a mental weekend of DJing because it's Halloween or oh, leading up to yeah, Halloween. Leading up, yeah, leading up. I've even been asked to wear a fancy dress <laughs> to hide my ugly face. No, which I'm um, a bit. Uh, <laughs> I don't usually. I did a fancy dress once for um, IC3, who's an MC in the drum and bass scene. And, um, Hold to IC3, come on. But I ain't got that outfit no more. It was like a prison one with some mad mask. Don't um, people want to pay for DJ Hype? Don't they want to see DJ Hype? Is that, is that what it is? I, I don't think it's the punters <laughs> asking for that. But I've got a couple of masks out there and a nun's hit. Like, I ain't had time. I don't know what the hell I've got. We'll put it I'll on the stories. A monster. Yeah, no, just go in as DJ Hype. You must walk in, get access all areas yeah, all yeah. over the shop, brother. Come on. I'm not a raver. <laughs> I've never been a raver. Haven't you? No. I started this at 13. No, 13. So I've always been the guy who goes, when I, 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 can, I raved a little bit yeah. in my late teens, but going out, uh, Pretty much, I, when I say I didn't rave, I don't mean I don't go out. No, but you but, were a sound system guy. But this even when I, I from a kid, from I went out, it's watching the sound system, mm. studying the guy on the door, watching the DJ. So it's mm. not going out and having a and bit. Apart from the period of my life where I took ecstasy tablets, <laughs> and you know that weren't that long, and I never used to take that much. But that is a fake, you know, like to so yeah. take the ecstasy pill, be all ravey yeah. and dance, but. Most of my life, even in my later years, after DJing for so long, I'd go out on a night off with my friends, even to a flipping, you know, you could go to a wedding or a christening and just the, the DJ at the wedding, I'll end up standing with the DJ, <laughs> looking, looking at, at his selection, selection <laughs> thinking and telling myself, what is wrong with you? <laughs> like, I, even at a DJ, and I'll be like, yeah, I wouldn't play that. Yeah, I'd play this. <laughs> well, that guy and all that. Yeah, yeah. Or I'd watch one. Would that go in with that? All right, I don't know Or about I'd that. watch one, at a, you know, he's at a christening acting like he is at an Elvis concert, you know, like getting right into it. <laughs> but then I did the same. So. Yeah. Well, you come from a background of, like you were saying, you know, sound system culture. And before all the drum and bass and all the jungle, um, it was sound system, wasn't it? It was all fields. All fields. There was no music. Sounds. We yeah. just stood there with a stick. No, well, I, I originate, for those that don't know, um, Hackney, Stoke Newton is where I grew up. Um, I used to live right by Stoke Newton Police Station. The real streets. Uh, it was the real streets. Now it's a bit gentrified. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Although I do talk to people around here that go, oh, they think it's quite rough. And mm. I'm like, it ain't, not compared to how it was. But there are mm. um, bad pockets still. That's life. Yeah. Um, any area has good and bad, even if you live in a posh area. Yeah. Um, but the, 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 the lack of things to do in our childhood, mm. um, sound system was probably the only option. The, you didn't sit there judging this. Mm. As you get older, you reflect and realise, like, why did we do music? Why did we get into Why that? do we do music? Why is it? Is there some, some magnetic hold, isn't it? Well, I think, one, for me, I always liked music from school. You know, like, I never 
com- I committed to learning whether it was the recorder, the xylophone, glockenspiel, trumpet. I was always doing something, but I never mm. fulfilled it. Mm-hmm. Um, finished the course or I was, I, guitar. My, I had a guitar when I was 10, but it, my fingers used to get too sore. So I'd always had a little interest in creating music, but not dance music or sound system. That was more when we got to secondary school age. Um, Brookhouse School, Rampton, Broadmoor, mm. whatever you want to call that place, it was a nut house. And out of there became the most craziest people I ever grew up around. Also, some of the greatest, cleverest, you know, it's a very... Um, because I've had a couple of interviews in the past where I talk about the, the downside of it, mm. you know, all the nutters, but they were good people. Mm-hmm. And also when I talk about the racial side of it, all right, with black people there and why, it, thinking about it more, we were a lot more integrated. It was just going out yeah. that was different. In the day, you know, you'd see black, white, you know, it wasn't segregated. Um, schools wasn't. Mm. But um, going out, clubbing. Yeah. And I was someone privileged enough um, to not grow up with a racial barrier in far of my head goes to going out clubbing. So I'd go where my black friends went naturally mm. because I had black friends close that I would go out to clubs with from school first before I had any real close white friend. I had white friends when I was a kid kid. Mm. And again, this is not choosing. It's not like, no, yeah, it's just well, you were just I had white friends and I didn't like them. <laughs> and then what is white? What is black? I don't know. I feel you. I get through so the same motions. I'm like, sounds, what is it? Yeah. You know? That's another story. You know, like yeah, 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 yeah. Carry on, carry on. There's but the, the sound <laughs> system thing was saying that we all loved as kids. We just used to draw pictures on the desks in the school, talk about it. And then one afternoon, I think we was either 12 or 13, and someone in my class just said, why don't we do a sound system? And we all just went, yeah, all right then. And <laughs> we do I it. think there was probably about eight or nine individuals at the very beginning from my class at school that I can't quite remember all the names, but Daddy Earl, well, Earl, Carl, um, me, and... Um, there was a couple others that didn't continue it, but me, Earl and Carl, all in the same class, decided to do sound system. Carl is obviously shut up and dance. Uh-huh. Earl is daddy That's Earl. Who also resides in these uh, yeah. local areas. Well, this, this sound system would not still be here if it wasn't for Earl. And can, he... I just, can I just interject just for a second? Because you're here. I'm trying to create this ambiance here. Like the, the air of the sound system is playing enough. You can hear it in the, the microphones. We have around us, if you're not listening and, and you're, just, you're, you're not watching and you're listening, we have the full-bodied, originally made timbers of the sound system behind us inside the dungeon of True Players. Well, Which this little bonkers. beauty here, I'm very proud of because it still works and um, you can't see it on camera because, you know, like you've got this bit. It, basically, we built all this when I was yeah. 14, 14 or 15 years old. Mad. I think we built this one when we were 15. It wasn't the first sound system we ever built, but this is the one that we kept. There's actually hang on, one, two, three, four. It's four four bass bins. I think we had six originally, or maybe even nine, over the years. But we stopped using all this out when we were in about nineteen eighty seven. Mm, and this 87? one was built in about nineteen eighty four. Mm. Actually, I was fifteen or sixteen at the time, hmm. and um, built from stolen wood from a wood timber yard that used to be in Stoke Newington. That's now all trendy flats. They, and you could there was no cameras back then. And at about three in the morning, about eight of us. All just big, massive, um, I don't know, 15 foot by 15 foot um, timber, sorry, um, chipboard. Yeah. made a chipboard. We carried them down Stoughton and I Road to um, Earl and Carl's then house where they were living, Belgrade Road, 53 Belgrade Road. Sometimes I pull up outside Old that house and just look at it and think, because that's where this... What we rebuilt down here... Was a replica of that. Well, no, not in looking, but this is what we had as kids. Earl and Carl, their house is where we'd store everything. That was our hangout. That was our, where we learned, practice. <laughs> and this is this arena here, down in our player's dungeon, what we call it now, um, having all this old stuff still here, working, um, but not... It's also, obviously, using new technology, mm. CDJs, computers. We've got the whole mixture. And I've turned it into like a sound system room 
we got a pre-production studio next door yeah. and the full-on one in the other room. So it's three. But again, total. these are for us. It's not a hire it out to the public, and also we're still building on it. And that passion. Yeah. I mean, I'm 53. This was built when I was 15. <coughs> Mad. And, and the, the eras that's gone from then to now is amazing. But yeah, that first sound system thing. It was there wasn't nothing else to do. Um, you know, if you was my age back then, you really went out, hung out on the streets, whether you was good or bad. Mm. People just hung out, innit? you know, like mm. you didn't have this internet technology where you could stay in. Yeah. You know, you either went hang on the actual streets and that could mean anywhere from sitting in a park to sitting on your doorstep. You wouldn't mm. stay in. Or you was at an amusement arcade or you was up to no good. Um, so the sound system for us and sports were probably the only two outlets um that were available to someone 15, 16, um, living in an area like mine with no money. You know, it's we built romantic. all this. We couldn't go and buy it. It's very romantic, isn't it? Can, yes, I, can, I, ask you, romantic. can I ask you something very personal? How are your ears? Because when I come in here, you're always playing something that... You, literally, you switch on, it's like, here, listen to this, it's new. Yeah. You know, it's like full power. How are your ears? What? <laughs> um, well... Honestly, yeah. I'm, I am slightly deaf now. Yeah, yeah. I'm mildly deaf, I was told, about four months ago. But you don't, notice, you don't notice the difference, do you? Not. Yeah, no, you do. Do you? Yeah, I know. It's, I knew, I guessed about a year ago, I think beginning of lockdown, because uh, the year previous to that, um, people around me, you know, like you're talking, yeah. and I'd be like, mate, talk louder, you're mumbling. Uh, or I'm talking, I'm being told you're shouting. <laughs> when it's like I'm not, or I've got the TV on louder than... Or even in here, you just said, I'm always playing music. You have no idea, ladies and gentlemen. It was Earl that got me to check my ears, because I'd come in here and I'm like, can't it go any louder? And he's like, you know how loud it is? Yeah. He's like, what is wrong with you? Or anyone would come in here and they'd be like, whoa, how you got it this loud? And I'm like, it's not that loud. <laughs> or, and also the kind That's of... That's amazing. <laughs> well, wow. I'm just used to, it's inevitable, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, 16 yeah. 16 years old, well, starting around 13, yeah. from loud reggae sound system. Headphones, blah, blah, blah. Well, all headphone that. monitors yeah, right monitor. there for DJing how many times a week? How many years DJing with the monitors up against you is like that? Well, professionally, yeah. probably from about 1990, not, you know, like 1991 or 92 is probably when I was getting regular DJ work. You know, like every yeah. week, two or three shows yeah. minimum. So that monitor Bonkers. in a club, loud, because... Yeah. And plus, I'd still go away and blast and headphones. Does the freak does the new frequencies in music affect that? Because back in the day, when you were turning it up, obviously the frequencies you were wrestling with some different frequencies. Now you can yeah, duck you things out so. and stuff. Do you think the do you think the music with the hearing yeah, you that you have? Duck no, no, I don't. Loud is loud. Loud is just if loud. If you're blasting up your ears, I don't think your ears go. Oh, that, that's been EQ'd a bit yeah. more. Diff <laughs> I mean, lower. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know, do you have iPod earring, um, yeah, yeah. headphones? Headphone. You know, like, if you wear them, yeah. like, I'll have them on, and within about 20 minutes, it, it comes up on my phone that we have, it automatically turns it down. Yeah. Does, on, your, yeah. It, on them wireless on, it turns it down and tells you you've had it too long, <laughs> and I ignore it straight away back up. The only thing I've made different since um, being diagnosed with mild deafness is mm. I don't really put headphones on much when I'm out. I have that, you know, you saw the speaker. Yeah. I have it like my loud, and I prefer that. Ah. Um, I try not to wear earphones. Because they are the... DJing in a club. I'm choice. still whacking it up. I'm still... Um, I did try it if I do need to really get... Like, for hearing, health-wise, I should get the ear moulds. Yeah. But I know with them, I'm just going to blast it. I can't vibe mm. unless music's very loud. It's a tough one, isn't it? Well, for me... So I'm just going to keep going till I'm <laughs> fucking deaf. Hey, listen, I don't think there's a real end to, to, to this this thing with you. I mean, it feels like... What well, is my deaf? It's when I death. die and I can't hear... When die I, or deaf, I, you Either my deaf or, or deaf. I'll go deaf. But but you've always been a constant, I, you know, through, you know, generations of music. Like we were talking about, you know, Fantasy FM, you know, countless awards and... and this transition that experienced back in the mid nineties, early nineties between um, the hardcore and jungle, you know, this was like it felt so organic. I mean, I was young at the it time. It was organic. It, you know, like when, like you can reflect on it as a transition, but at the time it was happening, you don't know. Yeah. Uh, if anything, the the you know, because it there was transitions for me throughout my you know, like going from reggae, mm. just reggae. This is what people, a lot of people in this industry. 
Even people that have known me throughout my whole career in the game I work alongside, until sort of the last year of me putting this up, never knew I had a sound system. That's mad, isn't which it? Which I thought was... I, th- I always mention it. Obviously, they don't read my interview. But, um, They've just it, been waiting for you to come on a Killer Killer podcast. That's all it is. See, that's what it was. See, they've just been waiting for you. I mean, you know, when you see a sound system as rigged and big and built, well built as it is, you know, this, it doesn't look like, a, you know, it doesn't look like the next day thing. It looks like you've been around with it for a yeah, long time. Yeah, well, the funny thing was when I first had it here or we started using it again, it, it changed even the way I, I, I look at music again because this is a reggae Takes sound system. Takes it back system. to the roots, I guess. Well, also the sonics of it. I'm mm. saying this is a reggae sound system with no limiters, no compression. And so what you hear is that bass, you know. Yeah. and um, Which is reggae designed, isn't it? It's yeah. By... And for all the years of the transitions from hard, you know, house to hardcore to jungle to drum and bass and back, um, the sounds, there's a lot of more higher frequencies, mid-range frequencies, mm. the stab sound, the, the mid-bass mm. that my ears were gravitating totally to mm. over the years. And it's only in lockdown when I started playing here, I'm like, fuck me. Certain tunes I was putting on, I'm like, this sounds <laughs> awful. <laughs> yeah, I might be starting a set with that. Really? And then there'll be other ones that I weren't playing much that, that were hitting me in the chest mm. with the sub. And naturally making me, you know, goosebump, you know, like that natural, and it, it, it made me realise this is the real me. Um, not, I'm not going to do none of that, but I'd forgotten just how good a sound system sounds, because like I said, I'm not a raver. Rekindles your love for the yes, music. Yes, and it rekindled me and opened my eyes to my past, because if you interviewed me a year ago, or a year before that, usually when people ask me about the old days, and I don't want to talk about that. Man. I'm like, mate, you, I don't want to be the granddad. But isn't it ironic that you, in full cycle to what you were, yeah. you've suddenly become emotionally engaged more with music because you brought the boxes back yeah. out? Yeah, yeah. And it, not just, it wasn't just the boxes, the vinyl, the kind of mute, hearing analogue, hearing... Um, Sort of being more organic because I wasn't down here to please a crowd. Yeah. I'm here just mucking about, playing tunes, and in that lockdown, not playing out to audiences, um, really made me find what I like again. Mm. I'm playing to a brick wall, mm-hmm. you know. I'll be here on my own, just jamming out and loving it. Yeah. But then I'd say to myself, I don't know if younger people, if anyone else is going to like what I'm doing. I have been engaged by your live streams, though, brother. Like, and again, I think that the environment. You can literally, you could, yeah, you know, you that's what I got. I think it. the people that loved it loved it for that yeah. rawness, yeah. And I don't, and the reason I did it that way, I mean, you've been here, I don't, well, you've been here both times, it was like this, yeah. But before we put these walls in, yeah. you know, there was carpet, it yeah. was people didn't know what it was, yeah. but I want, I loved it. That's how it had been for 30 years down here, um, pretty much, but not being used. So you're saying then that you don't, you haven't necessarily, you. The roots and the reggae and the the, the the frequencies of that is what has was the thing that kind of pole vaulted you into music and to radio and and the, um, and the like. Yeah, well, having a sound system was the first, um, uh, you know, my first step into the music industry mm. was building a sound system, doing the flyers, yeah. like badly. You know, there was someone I know talking to me recently about the first we played. I think this was before we even built this sound. Mm. We actually played at school and played a big sound system of the era. I don't want to name the name because don't embarrass Here myself. Here we go. Yeah. But it, they were a proper big man sound. Like we were kids. Even Come on, give this. us the name. We'll give no, us no, the name. I'm not because I don't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> like, but I'm proud that I. Someone was saying saying that like, we were very good. You know, like, but we were kids. We yeah, st- yeah. But we always had that. Um, what's the word? Like when we first started, we're 13. We've always been very, not arrogant, very brutal to each other mm. in the sense of like, there ain't no, you're amazing. No, no, you're Spades amazing. Like, what's this rubbish? You could do better than that. Mm-hmm. And, and we'd just be dissing each other to the point of where we got to a standard where we're all agreeing, you know what, you're fucking good at what you do mm. and you're good at what you do. And there would constantly be that boot camp. That's brilliant. You know, like, like we yeah. did it, but it wasn't a conscious decision. I think we just had very... Um, what do I call it? Because some of the younger high expectations. Um, well, our standards were set high, mm. and we knew our capabilities more. Again, only re- when you reflect back on your career mm. on that that stage of your life. Again, in the lockdown, me going full circle to that, thinking, you know what? 
you've been doing shit for years where really you're winging it. Mm. Like it or not. You know, you just said 20 years award winning. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, not 20 years of award winning. 20 awards mm. over... I think the first ever DJ award I won was in 1989... Which was a mixed competition. Yeah, let's get this. So, so you were, it was hip hop, it was DMC. No, no, DMC, I never won DMC. But I, you were I, in the DJ competitions. Yeah, like I was that. in the competitions, but that was, that weren't my first step into music, but that was my first step into maybe trying to win a competition. And yeah. I came runner up and I came, but I never won DMC. Even uh, Mix Mag once wrote about me winning DMC and I hit him up saying, I thought Mix Mag and DMC used to be owned by each other at mm-hmm. one point. Maybe I'm wrong. That's right. You're right. But I was like, don't you look? No. You're, it's like me going, yeah, the you, the as, mess, what, you as the best players are. It's when he's like, hang on, he weren't signed to players. Mm-hmm. Um, so the 1989 was the London Mix Championships. I was on it. Yo, MTV, yo, reps. Yeah, MTV reps. And that was when I just started Legendary. calling myself hype. Yeah. I was previously Dr. K with the sound system, and in that competition, I was Dr. K. But I've, I've got the video. Have you? But I don't Have know you? where I ain't got a video player. God damn it. And I want to see if it, I'm hoping scooping, it works. Scooping I want to see. exclusive on yeah. it. Come on. I don't know. But that, you know, that from 89 to 2020, mm. I've won awards. Not that um, early in my career, um, I won more. And. The last award I won was very unexpected, but very well appreciated. Thank you, DJ Mag, um, especially in the middle of the lockdown. But that lockdown reverted me back to my roots. I think Maybe. it reminded people of, well, of, of hype in a, in a way that they remember as a, as a youth. Yeah, well, that's the ones that were you know, also projected mm. to the new, newer kids, but it wasn't yeah. a plan. But what I'm saying, what had happened is the one thing that I did do consciously, because I quit smoking as well, so my brain was a bit more... Um, I'd been a stoner winging it, if mm. I was honest, for the last. Not There's a lot of things I could have done or should have mm. done. And I was fine not to do it. And I was doing all right. And yeah, I was, yeah. So in the lockdown, I thought, hang on, how did you get big in the first place? You got big by not looking at no one else and just getting on with what you did. And organically, it grew. Mm. Yeah? Rather than, oh, shit, you know, I've got to be as good as... Killer, killer, or I've got to be as good as this guy or that guy, or I got to hope DJ Blah Blah is going to play my tune. Know your lane almost, and just, and yeah. refine I that. Yeah, I thought let me go back yeah. to that, and I'm let me go back to my organics, and again, I might not have success from it, but I'm happier. And you know, one thing that uh, since the COVID thing, lockdown, um, not because of the actual disease, COVID, but a lot of things have happened in the last year. A few people around me have passed away, not so much, not from COVID, but from other illnesses. Right. The time of life I'm at, having Rest time off, Rest giving me a lot of time to reflect on my own life and mm. think, you know what, for the last how many years, you've been up and down in motorways. Now, like I said, I've got five shows this weekend, which is not what I planned. And like, I shouldn't complain because it's great, mm. you know, to still be popular enough to get five shows in a weekend. Crazy. But at the same time, I'm at an age where I don't want to be, I'm not 20 no more. You've got to be realistic with mm. your health, your age. Um, you know, what happens is when you do five shows, I know Sunday, I'm going to be one moody fucker, you know. <laughs> and, and my recoveries, you know, like, you know, there's a few DJs in the last couple of years that have had illnesses, you know, and it is because you do it it's at the rate much. we do it. You do it at the pace we do it. You know, most of you watching this have a phase of going out in your life. You know, maybe 18, let's just say 18 to 25. Mm, yeah, that's mm. seven years. Yeah, you know. And but then, then you triple might... that because you're doing it. No, but I'm <laughs> saying just just that alone. Yeah. Let's just be simple. If you go out a few couple of times a weekend when you're, you know, when you're first young, you go out all the time. You mm. might do drugs or drink. Yeah. You might just drink, you know. But you you're not going right on a pub crawl every weekend mm. for the next 30 years. Because what happens as well, as a DJ, you you can be quite healthy. Mm. And I'm sure there's some out there that are very healthy. But if you're going at an intense um, global touring, which you've done, mm. I've done, and you just do it. And on paper, well, yeah, yeah, we've you, got a 20 day tour of America. That's oh, the bit. Amazing. Everything's yeah. exciting on paper until you're in that flight, changing at so and so and so. Going fucking... east coast, west coast, yeah. your body clock's terrible. You're yeah. coming out of a club at three in the morning, you're shattered and jet lagged, and they're telling you, right, you've got to be at the foyer at 7 a.m. because you've got to get to the airport and you've got to go forward five hours difference to New York to play there this evening. <laughs> yeah, and then, yeah. all right, I need to eat before we go to the, the oh, there's only my, the service state. So Worst. you end up eating shit. 
then you might start having a drink, air with a dog, you yeah. know, like, oh, I'm fucked from last night still. Yeah. So then you get to the next club, I'll have a little drink to wake me up. <coughs> it's quite easy to become yeah. a drug addict, alcoholic, you know. And I've watched um, people's weight. You know, I'm 53 years old and I'm You're sure... You're looking good, man. Yeah, but I'm not as good as I know I could be. Um, but I'm not bad for my age. And I see a lot of the youngers, not a lot, a few that like I look at them and say to them, mate, you want to slow it. down mm. if you want to... Because when you are young, you look at someone my age where it looks that's a thousand years away. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, all do true. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And health... You really don't, but when you're in your sort of forties upwards, and people are getting cancers mm. and heart attacks, and they are a lot of it caused by bad living, it's bad living, party lifestyle, you not can't... sleeping, yeah. bad eating. Well, sleeping habits for me were awful, and I just accepted it, and that what got me mm. smoking too much. Mm. Um, so mm. this one year and a half kind of lockdown, you know, don't get me wrong, I'm not glad. There's a lot of things I don't like about it, mm. but it, it's like a a lot of people call it like a restart. Mm. Like I could recharge, reassess my life, like not reset, just innit? not just music. Yeah, reset. That's the word. Yeah. So now I'm in this lovely position where I can I'm making music again as a producer, and I'm actually enjoying it. Um, still playing out sound system. Um, now getting some younger artists to sort of gel with. So and we've only just started doing this part. So I'm excited and enjoying it. And that's all I want out of life now, mm. is to be, please God, I don't get ill and die. Um, my friends that I love stay around me. And that I can carry on doing music for a living, but not as a wage slave, mm. you know, because I don't know how many years i got left. Sounds like you found a passion back back in the, the Well, scene. because I'm not doing it for a living. Yeah. In that lockdown, like I'm saying, now I'm back out doing it for yeah. a living. I don't know. This time next year, I might be like, oh, but it makes you again. feel. it makes you think to yourself, oh, man, I've just found this again. I hope nothing happens. I can't jinx this. I've got no, to be I'm clean. I've got to be clean. I'm lucky I've got very good friends around me. Mm. And my closest friends have been my friends since I was a kid. So they know me better than... Old Ty Earl. Old Ty Earl. Um, and... What he does, and not just him, I got another friend, Ricky, I got another friend, Eamon, that I talk to them in slightly different angles, mm. but they're all sensible. They all know me, the good and bad, mm -hmm. you know, and they're realistic with it. You know, the, you you need to be told when you're doing good things and when you're doing mm. bad things by someone who you trust their judgment and they know you, mm. you know. And um, the one thing... The Earl always says, you know, like he's always trying to get me to slow up a bit and like, mate, it'll happen. Mm. Don't push for it. And that's how we used to be. We just did it. And so now I'm in that that momentum of, um, like I said, happiness, production, life, bucket list, mm. you know. It's, it's not going to be long before I'm 60, then 70. Yeah, I don't know how long I got. So it's like, might live to 100, who knows? When you, when you just for reference, guys, when you meet up with Hype, it, you're definitely stepping into the hype show, and I mean that with as much affection because you get so immersed, and it becomes a, it becomes an, an, a, an, a whole environment. And as a personality, you know you're a force. It's like there's only f f few unique p people out there that could hold a hat and say, "Right, he's going to tell the truth." Thanks, man. It's true, isn't it? You know, I've been lying the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I. I, I, I what you just said means a lot to me because this is what I'm, I, I've always been like this. This is like this is why again having close friends that you've had from a kid, mm. they tell you you ain't the man. You you know like boy mm. you've changed. You know like people you know in that game. You can meet people. Mm. I've had people pass through me that have come through as the humblest people, and then a couple of tunes success. They got a new haircut. Yes. They're walking different. <laughs> they're talking to me different. When I'm like, why are you talking like that? <laughs> About me, I'm like don't have to like me, but what you see, I, I I hope what you see is what you get, and I as much as people find that refreshing, which mm. I find strange, it's also frustrating because it's you know like the whole reason we've done this a second time is in this world of internet, you can't say what you think anymore, <laughs> or you've really got to watch what you say, even if it's something that's true, not <laughs> offensive, uh. and. You know, just being a normal off the cuff statement that does it, it can be taken away and expanded. I've seen it with other yeah. people, famous people, you know, actors, actresses, singers, people that like, have said something 10 years ago that is so nothing, mm. yet they've turned up 
you know, mm. and I don't see that in reality, mm. only on the internet. But this is a control thing. Like, bear in mind, you know, you're a record label CEO. You're a dude that, that has done for everything from in a controlled way. You've been the pirate radio DJ. You've been the label owner. You've been the, the crew creator, the music producer. And all that is control. Like, is the fear more that there, there's a lack of control out there that if no, you do speak honestly... No, I just think there's a lack of fucking... There's too many idiots that have a platform. Yeah. And I think it's more idiots that uh, that write things than the sensible people in any subject. Most mm. sensible people are not keyboard warriors sitting there gaining comments pages. Mm. Um, <laughs> and the it, they can affect... I watched... Um, like I read the tabloid press, not because I believe what, just to see, let's see what bullshit they're, they're selling today. Mm -hmm. And there's patterns to what they write. I see it all the time. You know, they'll highlight a subject and they'll keep writing about it. And then they might make it a bit bigger and a bit mm -hmm. bigger. And then all of a sudden it becomes mainstream. Yeah. You know, and all of a sudden it's either normalized or sensationalized or everyone's shit scared of it. Mm -hmm. You know, it, that's the media. But then we do it ourselves yeah. online. I see online. You'll get someone talking complete bollocks. And I know it's bollocks. You know, they're, they're misinformed or they, you know, it could be but just, regardless of the subject. Su suggestion. But they're talking like they're an expert, mm. you know, about a subject that, you know, that they're wrong on. And then someone else comes in with them and agreeing with their wrongness. Mm. Mm. And all these idiots, they, there are clever people that do put statements up, but it gets overrun or a small issue is highlighted when there's far bigger issues going on yeah. that no one's looking at. And yeah. I think, well, if you're upset about this little thing, why are you not talking about this bigger thing? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. the 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 whole iPhone. You know, you know, there's there's subjects that people go online and they're passionate about mm -hmm. and they're protesting and, but they they'll sit there with their phone in their hand yeah. and their night trainers just sitting on the sofa doing nothing. I, no, but I'm looking, but that phone is made. Yeah. There's a whole story to how that phone's made. There's a lot of suffering that goes in the phone. A lot of suffering that goes in them 100%. shoes. But those yeah. people don't talk about those two no. issues. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not saying that they shouldn't talk about what they're talking about, but, but it's contradictory. Lots it's like me and you talking about this is damn it, like there's a hole in it, it's leaking when the whole building's burning. It's, a down. Of water it's like, why are we right? looking at this bottom of the water when the whole yeah. building's burning around us? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the true. internet can give you very um, distorted views of what people. Yeah. There's a guy, is his name Osho or Osho, like some Indian guy. I don't even know him. I just found him on YouTube and he's talking about democracy and he goes democracy people want democracy for the people by the people yeah. blah 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 the people because the people and then he ends it with but the people are retarded <laughs> and, <laughs> and what he means is most people are not retarded but most people are not we're not educated not on educated. a lot of the things that we're told to vote on yeah, or yeah, yeah. choose that's right and you know the, the politician will say the British public know mm. what they want he's like we don't know fuck all and we, we're I'm going to ask you something really, cr really critical here. And I guess you've got to watch how you answer it, I suppose. But I want to ask you it. Go on. If you're standing in a crowd of, you know, your standard three and a half, four thousand 4,000 people on an ev any given weekend evening. You mean that in an event? Or in yeah, the yeah. Like you, yeah. like you're DJing, you're playing out. Like on measure, the, on balance, that audience there arguably is, you know, your Public no, but they're not all there for giving political statements. I'm, True. I'm just talking about like we. Like I have stupid. I'm not like oh, I'm this wise man and everyone. Fucking DJ hype. Yeah, but that's <laughs> but that don't mean I know. Like all I know is me and that guy upstairs, Earl. When we talk about life, yeah. I've lived my life very organically in everything, and I ain't done everything right. No, that's right. I've made a lot of mistakes in my life, but I've led a very organic life. I left school at an age. I think I stopped going to school by the time I was about thirteen. I had, um, was it educational welfare officer, um, child psychology, psychi was it social worker? Mm. I used to go, you know, like I was sent to truancy school in the end that I didn't even bother going. I just did what I was doing. Mm. And if I had, my son is 23 years old um, next month. And if I, me not having a father, no one stopped me doing what I was mm. doing. But as a father, I would have been not let me, mm. like me now, if I had a son doing what I did at that age, I'd kill him. He ain't doing that, you know. I, I, and I think when I look back in my early years, any adult looked at me like, what is he doing? You know, you're destined mm. to fail. 
and I wasn't sitting there, no, I'm going to succeed. I just accepted, boy, none of us from our area is going to be nothing. Mm. And you took, I lived life by the day. I never had like, this forward thinking plan. And um, in this day and age, I still don't have the plan. I've gone back to that. Does that organic. fear you? Does, do you get nervous about that sometimes? No, that you do? no, I like not having. I, I got more nervous when I'm trying to plan. Yeah, I get I feel more you. stressed. Or what if it don't go wrong? What if it's like, just live your life? I've got this far, and that younger audience, I don't look at them about it. I just play music and hope that that audience in front of me is enjoying what I'm playing. And a younger audience is too. Like you've got. I mean, if and I went yeah, and done a political mad. debate with them all. Yeah. No, obviously, if they're all talking to me, I don't know what their inner thoughts are, yeah. and and individually, but I know when I do stuff on the internet, most of the time I get so it's Twitter. You get I very rarely get anything negative pushed mm. towards me. Mm. What I do find, and if it is a negative statement, I'm realist in myself. Like, you know what? He's right there, or he's wrong. But I don't rise to it and start entering him in. Only once where. Um, it's always hard, isn't it, when you well, end up wading in and you wish you had even started. My advice to anyone, which is easier, so is just ignore it. Yeah, or look to. at it. Obviously, if I put a statement up and all my industry mm. or peers are all saying, boy, what you said there is very wrong. Then you're and, fucked. You're like, no, oh. but then I know I've made a mistake. Mm. But if it's some keyboard warrior yeah. and I look and he's got two followers, it's like, who are you? And you're just on my line being negative. Mm. Or you get people that... But I don't, um, yeah. very rarely. And Instagram, I think I get like, for every thousand comments, I'd say every tenth, I, I, I could probably count on one hand. I've had about five negative yeah. ones that I could see. Well, you won't get any on here. Not on a Killer Killer podcast. No, very I'm, intelligent audience we have here as it's well. Killer Killer, come on. But what I do is I, <laughs> I am also, as well, as much as I want to be real, which I, but when I'm on camera or anything like that, I do. In my head, there is a filter button or trying to be like, mm -hmm. don't, um, what's the word? Don't start being too, you know, like sometimes you forget it. you're being streamed or live and that it's just two guys mm. in a room. Mm. Because um, to me, two people, regardless of colour, sexuality, age, religion, whether they're the same religion, you know, mm. all say something that mm. might offend someone. And they don't even... But isn't that like the way of life, isn't yes. it? You're meant to create that friction. Yes. That's the whole idea, isn't it? Well, you debate free speech. Well, it gets a bit demolition, man, thing, if you don't... You know, if I come know. online and I'm just hating on everybody, but I, as I said, I haven't had that bad experience, but it's, that's at the back of my mind sometimes, I'm like, boy, careful what you say, because I am quite a realist. And I've watched people that talk quite, like, you know, say things that to me are not even offensive to any, and they're perceived as a, it's yeah, like, yeah. almost like people are looking okay. to, let me take that word and that word. Look, he said he rhymed that with that. That means he must be a, you <laughs> know. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Um, maybe, as you know, this is a street culture and sport and art show. And I've always found DJ Hype as a, as a quote unquote brand. You merge the, Street culture really well, like like even the t shirt you got graffiti on it, and you you come from that a reggae, is. yeah, you come from a reggae sound system. You've got you've got yeah, your street. roots are streets. Well, this is through. the problem I had in crossing over into. That's why I never crossed over into the mainstream fully. The way um, when I was in the late nineties, well, well, midnight to late nineties, we were signed to BMG, Ganja Crew, mm. myself, Sync, Pascal, held tight, um, and. They wanted us to be the next prodigy, next chemical, chemical brothers. Mm. I didn't want that. Mm. I don't like... I like it at this level. And um, What is that level? What, what is underground. This level? I don't know. I don't it's know cool what as this, fuck. This, this underground cool fuck. is like, I'm known, yeah. but I'm not. You give us the the, the light. You you are a torch okay. for people in our genres. Well, uh, it's nice for because real. The, like, if you look like you doing the YouTube thing, you know, like what I've found, mainstream media, mainstream, whether it's music or just the telly, like I have a TV at home that I flick the channels mm. and I'm like, there is absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. Like nothing. Nothing at you've, all. You've got, you got your strictly come dancing sort of Some program. Some weird botch job TVs and shit. Or you have shit. interviews with celebrities for like five minutes where they don't talk about nothing. nothing. We don't know who they are. We don't laughs. know who they are neither. No. <laughs> and then you've got people on, uh, I don't know, it's just, and there is a market for it still. But I know it's like with my own son, he don't watch telly. They do, you know, uh, that... TV, I think, is a dying thing. Mm. Um, it's, in a good way, the internet gives you a platform to go away and hear other views. Mm. 
the downside is it there's a lot of shit views yeah, that yeah, yeah. if you don't know if I, I don't know about building a car. So if I want to learn about building a car, I could go online, let's build a car. It's and a media, there'll be some it? experts, but there'll be some idiots giving you wrong and if mm. you don't it's working out who's mm. you know, there's so many political, racial, musical sub or all subjects on life, everything mm. that you know, to educate myself, I go online. And I go on YouTube and I don't listen to the first person that, you know, he's talking, so it must be true. I might pick a subject and then listen to three or four different individuals talking about that subject. And then making my own mind up at the end of it of, if there's a pattern, mm. you know, well, that's making sense. There's a there's a philosopher, Krishna Murtu, Murti or Murtu, his name is, and he passed away years ago. Mm. And he always... People would come to his lectures like he's the teacher and they're going to learn. And you say, I'm not the teacher. No one's a teacher. We just Ooh. talk and we mm. debate and express. Yeah. And I kind of live my life that way. If something's good to me, then it's good. If the TV tells me something's bad, I don't go, oh, it must be bad because they say so. You question it, you? You know. Well, I question everything probably overly. Um, but, yeah, having that organic button in my head and that, you know, I got got this far I've got this far in life mm. and I'm still here on my own morals um, and quickly going to that internet um, there's so many things I can watch I like watching interviews like these mm. where someone's talking for 45 minutes an hour mm. two hours some of them I watch some people they talk for five hours I fall pause asleep it, pause it. Yeah, yeah. no but I'll watch it but that person is telling a proper story and then you, you learn a lot more so I, I enjoy it all but it is some of the things I watch also bullshit ones. I'm like, well, who is? Mm. And you're looking, it's had a, a hell of a lot of views. And you look at the comments, and there's all people putting in their views like, yeah, he's yeah. right. When you know, well, that, that he's wrong. Trust in it. It's a trust. Yeah, but that that's the mistrust and yeah. question everything mm. and conspiracy theories. Those three sort of elements are what fuck yeah. it up sometimes. And if you're not that competent, you're going to click on the first thing you look at and believe it because it is, you know. So, and I think that is saying people are, you know, what's the word? Everybody's got to make their own minds up in anything in life, but you only can decide on what you're mm. shown. You know, my opinions, why am I the way I am? Because of where I grew up, the way I grew up. And all of these and what's things. what's been fed to me. Little components, aren't they? Well, when I watch people talk about certain subjects and they'll go back, to say 1980, mm. oh, it was worse then for ABC. And I'll be thinking, well, I lived in that era, and no, it weren't. It weren't quite like that. Mm. Or sometimes it is like that, you know, or sometimes I've got to be the one telling that story. But I think young people today, it's harder for them, it's, it's, it's better for them in a way they can be educated. You know, yeah, like all, it's all more, there online. But then there's can, also yeah. a load of misinformation, yeah. and I think that is the, who do you believe in the world? Yeah. You know, whether it's a war, a, a, any, you know, the COVID thing. God, mm. when COVID was on, I, 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 I don't know if people are still talking about it, but you know, you got people just like a year of you, hell. you got people that were skeptical. People said it didn't exist. People that don't want to take the um, yeah. injection. It's all headache, whatever. isn't it? No, and there's certain views that I'm like, well, that's a fair view. And other people that, I mean, there was this, you know, I met someone who told me, he asked me, what do you think of COVID? And I said, well, I just had it. Because I mm. had COVID mm. in July. And um, about a week after getting better from it, I had a walk round here one Saturday night. It was wicked. I just walked mm. about and watched life. That, that I loved the, the fact that it was... I just walked around like as if I was a reporter. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I had my my live stream on, but it wasn't promote. It wasn't like a, we're doing this prop. I just had it on, and I was walking around going, "Look, there's a black guy, there's a Chinese woman, there's a white person, there's an Indian. They're all working together. Like it was just multiculturalism. Every club around here kind of lives you and make you makes you live in the now, doesn't it? Well, it made me see. Look, if you watch go online, you'd think everybody's racial abusing them. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm and like, all, that, all yeah. I'm seeing is love. I didn't see any fights, you know. And I this one guy come up to me. He recognised me and was chatting to me for a minute about some event I'd done. Then he brought up, what do you think of COVID? And I said, mate, I don't really want to go there, but I did have it. And then he looked at me and went, COVID doesn't exist, and just stormed off. I've had debates with people, and I'm saying, I don't know nothing, do I? Mm. Neither do you, though. No, no one knows nothing. No, I get me, yeah, I know, because what he said, I just doctor said, or that. And I'm like, none of us fucking know. We just know what we're reading. All I know, they're saying, obviously, the world's locked down on it. 
I had it, and when I had it, I was very ill. Mm. I wasn't hospitalised, but it weren't like, oh, it's just like a normal cold. And it gives you the chance to recalibrate and Yeah, but that, shit. If, if they just said, look, everybody, it's going to be a year, and we'll all be back to normal... We'd all say no, wouldn't we? We'd all be no, like, no, but what I'm all... saying to you, not, not giving you the choice, but just telling you, mm. my the, what I didn't like about the COVID is, I don't know when this is ending. I'm not mm. earning no money. I've mm. got to feed That's the worst, yeah. That bit was what, um, the, the beginning of it, I'm all right, you know. It must be nice to go out and... Get on the decks and have what, a spin live again. Yeah, again. Um, yeah, I, I, but what it fucked me up on was the travelling. Because mm. I'd just travel, travel, travel. I could be Russia today, back tomorrow. You know, we've done it. And you're getting um, on, on with it, yeah. And that come, taking my foot off for break for a year and a half, going back to work, just going to Bristol. Mm. The first gig I did was a gig. Hang on, I think I did a... Did I do a London show... I can't remember if I did them the same weekend, but I had a, one of my first gigs anyway was Bristol. Mm. And Bristol is not that far. It's a two-hour <laughs> run, you know, in the there car. There and back, same Yeah, night. you wouldn't yeah. look at that as one, oh, you've got a oh, it's Bristol. Mm. But it took me about four hours there. I couldn't get there. They mm. shut the motorway. All that memory of like, here we go. I've got to eat service station food at two mm. in the morning when pre-lockdown, I cook. You know, yeah, like yeah. I got into that. Yeah, the rhythm. Yeah, the, yeah that's right. But that travelling bit, it was great playing. It was. It was like oh, performing live. You can't beat it when it's at its best. But the travelling bit, it made me realise I don't like this travelling no more. Not, not when you're um, doing it at the rate you're doing mm. it. Because so you were on a ride and it was you fed off the energy. But once you disconnect, all of a sudden it's like, oh, f- it's almost like a resistance in your head, isn't it? Well, also, I think it all hit me. You know, like, yeah. if today you got to do this, and tonight you got to do that, and then tomorrow you got to do this and that, even though you're knackered, you got to get on with it. Get on with it, yeah. But if someone said, right, stop now, you, ain't, you there's nothing for you till Christmas. It fucks with you. Give it a couple of weeks. No, but your whole body... Yeah. You know, I've been autopiling it probably for 20 years. Mm. Like, and it, that having that rest by it, not mentally, because it wasn't roller coaster no. mentally. Because at first I was quite happy to have a couple no, of no, weeks. No, 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 it discharges you from what is that you're you were riding on in that momentum. And the downside as yeah. well in the lockdown that you know I had all these views. What I was going to do in this dungeon, I'm mm. going to do this, and mm. I'm going to, and I was running before I could walk. Really, mm. it's going to, and then they relocked it down, didn't they? Just mm. before Christmas, yeah, even yeah. though they never li- they never lifted it fully, but they went into proper lockdown and I couldn't even have anybody here. Mm. Like, and I remember sitting in that room next door with the puppet, you know, like yeah. with the, the girl puppet, like with my hand. I was thinking, what can, what video can I do? And I just thought, I just got pissed off. And I was like, look at it, there's no one here. It ain't working. Looking at the puppet, whose stupid ideas was this? <laughs> you know, it ain't, but it was just having a bad day yeah. and no friends yeah. because no one was allowed it. But it. Once we got back to that where it didn't have to be lifted where everyone's back to work, mm. but just at least I can come in. This was my sanctuary. This was my rethink, my restart. You know, and mm. the music is the therapy. Yeah. I can't sit in silence. Uh, There's a lot of people out there that feel the same as well. I so the, the the coming here, and yeah, I noticed that whoever came here, in, mm. like when we did have the times when people was allowed, they'd come here and it was to them like, oh, I haven't had a baseline. You got a bar, you got pretty much a whole drinks cabinet upstairs. Plus well, you yeah, got the yeah, sound yeah, system. It's yeah. a proper bubble. But it's not a nightclub. That's no. the thing. But it's no, it's a, a proper great... bunker, like yeah. you say, the bunker. It, it was, and it re-energised me in ways that I didn't think would happen. So it's fucking fantastic. I don't know where it's taking me because um. The, the I don't think it's going to change me playing out dramatically in my normal sets. Although if anyone's heard me in the last, since post-lockdown, New tunes, would baby. say that I'm not playing much. You know, like the sort of duh, duh, dee, dee, stab sounds. Yeah. And mid, I'm playing, trying to be more um, sub-orientated. But that don't mean it will stay like that because like I said I'm organic. New I don't tunes know. are banging though. Well, yeah, yeah I hope are so. Um, but he, he, the production thing is still a learning curve for me. But just what I play out in general, I'm trying to, like I said, debate, bring, not bring the bass line back because people are still playing it, but where I've stripped back more. I think mm. my music, my taste in my sets is more, less eclectic Dictated than it was. Dictated on this bad boy yeah, here. Well, it's trying to have that sound, sound system. Tambo, but again, it might change. Mm. But I'm just enjoying it. And my um, friends and peers that hear me awful think I'm playing better and enjoying it more but does that equate That's to awesome. a 20 year old in a nightclub who wants Clearly to hear does. the loud 
Well, no, I mean, the, you know, like I, I expect me to be booked in slightly different territories in the next couple of years, happily, because it's my choice, you know, but it might not. And if I carry on playing where I'm playing, I'm fine with that as well. Mm. It, it, it's the key, just stay happy, stay positive happy. thoughts. I've got a lot of friends around me that, you know, at my age that don't do this for a living, mm. don't have this outlet. And being a middle-aged man or whatever you want to call me, old Dang man, happy. father, um, at this time of life, you do um, go through changes. And that lockdown helped me battle all that away from the public. And just like that, what a roundup. All right, man. Thank you so much for having us in. That was one big waffle as usual, wasn't it? We, it was we said we're going to keep it to certain subjects. <laughs> but yeah. That was good. But, I, but I was happy. Love it. Whether you're a road sweeper or you're Say that again for the people. Say that again for the people. What about being happy? Yeah, tell them to be the happy. Key. Well, I've always said it. I've said it to other people. It's like being, whether you sweep the streets or you, you know, you could be a road sweeper or a multi billionaire. Yeah. If you're happy, to me, you've won. If you're content with your life. Exactly. You know, and exactly. I'm at a time of life where it's time to be content, not... I think Groove Rider once said to me, you're so competitive. You're always competitive. <laughs> that sound boy in me um, is still in me, but I'm trying to take that foot off the brake and like, stop looking at everybody else, stop trying to compete and just do what you're doing. I think that's a lesson to be had for everybody because obviously there's a sport in all this art and it's important to remind yourself that the most the most competitive person is yourself and to yes. enjoy what you're doing. Well, you're, and also just make sure you've got people around you that are very, it's very important, I think, that you have a few people in your life, regardless of what you do, mm. that are, that give you good advice when you need it and true advice. Not, you have, fr certain people have friends that don't want to upset their friend. Mm. You know, no, he's doing really bad stuff, but I don't want to say it because it will only upset him. Mm. No, but you ain't that guy. A, no, no, but when you don't have that, then you go off and do wrong shit. You've I'm, given me some recently good advice, sound advice, and I really appreciate it. Oh, really? It, it yeah, worked? Yeah, it worked. Oh, that's good. It man. worked. We won't talk about it. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. free advice. But again, I, I'm like that, whether you ask, you know, you didn't ask me, did no, you? No, no, we no, got into it. I like, it was good. It, I am like that. Um, a lot of people that don't know me see the moody DJ guy in a club, you know, where the equipment might not be working properly or I've had a, you know, four hours sleep in three mm. days and, oh, he's so miserable, he's so moany. And it's like, well, I'm not, I'm human. Mm. I'm not good at smiling and waving. Mm. Like, hi guys, how's it doing? <laughs> yeah, okay, it's really good. Although I did have a, a an in, I did have a meeting here with my management, my agent, who said, try and be a bit more like, and I have, I've been... <laughs> Asking promoters at the end of my set, I said, Did, was I all right today? I didn't say anything horrible. Because sometimes I go with, I remember doing Glastonbury and um, I was, you know, like, I'm in a good mood. Yeah, yeah. I had no bad mood. I was there with Earl. We were doing two shows. I think we'd been somewhere else the day before, just in a good mood. The weather was nice. Yeah. And I was in the room waiting to get my passes in the caravan and they were giving us the keys to our caravan. And this woman pulled me to the side and was like, I think you need to calm down, take a breath and just relax. <laughs> and I said to her, do you think I'm in a bad mood here? Oh, I said, I'm in a really good mood. No, she thought I was moment. in this angry, but and I said to her, you obviously have never seen me. That's when I'm hilarious. flipping angry. I, I was saying, look, I said to her, oh, I said, that's my best mate. Ask him. I'm in a great mood. I've got no... Issue. But it's all very groovy in Glastonbury, isn't it? Well, no, but that, I find that going back to what we were saying earlier, the, you got to be careful who you talk to, what you say. Yeah. Well, don't say it like that. Yeah. Got, and my manager was saying, like, even though you was you, I had an issue happen at a club, and what they got told, talk about it got remixed, then remixed again, then remixed again. Chinese whispers. Yes, and they were telling me that when you, even though what your my view of the story was correct, they're like you by you acting the way you did and wearing your heart on your sleeve, people don't especially in a club, and I, I had to take all this on board. You know, if, if I'm trying to tell you saying, when the monitor's blasting, I've got to shout. Mm. So immediately, he was shouting at me arrogantly. It's like, no, we can't hear each other. <laughs> so I've got to shout in your ear, oh. Plus, I'm stressing, because the, the, you know, so they we, we came to a compromise um, that I'm like, you know what, I'll take that on board. Mm. So I will still say things that, if you're doing stuff that I'm not happy with, but I'm toning it down. See? And also, I, I get straight. I don't want to have a row with nobody. No. Believe it or not, I don't want to argue. Peace, love and unity. Peace, love and unity. See? Bit of that. Bit of that. My brother, DJ Hype, thank you so much for joining us, my brother. <laughs> I know you're a busy man. Well, not as busy as you. <laughs> but no, thank I'm you busy. so much, my brother. Um, um, thanks for um, having me and thanks for coming down. Yeah. 
More Viva La Dungeon. Come on. We'll do another one. Yes, we will. We'll, we'll be, be back cover. in effect, See, of course. There's loads we didn't cover. Yeah, yeah. See, we're back. He but had hey, a list. I've he... got the list. Didn't happen. So, I knew it would For wouldn't. the Grandmaster Flash list, except it's for exclusive content. DJ Hype inside the place. Thanks so much for having us, my brother. Thank you. Thank it you. Was it not, no? You know what it is. Killer Keller Podcast live, striking with a vengeance. Sharing is caring, all right? Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. Stay lucky, people. Bye. Bye. Peace. <laughs> Hey, now that's how you do it.